सहनावतु सहनौ भुनक्त सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तुमाशावह ओ शाति शाति समस्तजनकल्याणे निरत करुणाम नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर वसुदेवसुत देव कंसचानूरमर्दन देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु माता पिता बंधुश्च सखा विद्याद्रविडम This is on, right? Question here. It's on. Okay. Can Vedanta serve as a form of psychotherapy that can treat emotional wounds? Now we just now studied that all the sokam, moham, everything else is mitya. So the question from Vedanta is: What is the reality? First, we should understand. And the Vedanta says, "It says you are totality itself. You are absolute truth, which is pure consciousness and existence." So it's trying to point out what's your true nature. and from that point you you look down and look at the world becomes only mithya so so it says vedanta is brahma satyam jagan mithya and jivo brahmaiva napara so brahma satyam the absolute truth is brahma the infinite you want to come and listen oh <laughs> brahma satyam absolute real reality is totality that you are that is sarvantaryami so from that reference everything becomes mithya mithya means neither real nor unreal that's what mithya sadasat vilakshanam mithya that which is different from either existent nor non existent so we'll go into details again later what exactly is mithya but the mithya means it has no absolute reality for it it's only transactional reality so in the transactional reality the we understanding that i am above all this that vedanta is trying to tell if i understand it clearly then everything becomes of of lower type which has no meaning it is just as looking getting up as long as i am in the dream state and suffering the dream consequences as an i am in the dream now if you pose the same question suppose does waking helps you to recognize as is it is it a psychotherapy to to clear out the emotional wounds of a dreamer says i have never had those that's only superimposed at that time so when as long as i am in that state i feel that's real but understanding that this is not really real but only apparently real itself washes out the validity for those experiences you can come in sir if you want <laughs> okay so you don't have to expect you don't make a reality so anything that is unreal is only like in drama you are playing in the drama in the drama scene the the character may have emotional problems or physical problems or and the problems have to be dealt at that level for that 
whatever need to be done at that level is uh, that only. For example, if I am sick in the dream, I had to go to dream hospital only, not the real hospital. Real, I am thirsty in the dream, uh, the water in the, I may be having a water on the table, that water doesn't help me, I had to drink dream water to quench the dream thirst. So I had to do at that level whatever the transactions is required in order to solve that problem, knowing well the problem itself is not valid. That is understanding from Vedanta. So if you understand clearly, all psychiatric problems or emotional problems of yours will not be a problem. Because you understand clearly. Others may not have that understanding. So don't apply your theory to them. <laughs> don't say it's all mitya. They will hit you and then say this is also mitya. <laughs> so, don't. so when you are dealing with those problems, deal according to the need. When somebody is suffering, don't say this is all mitya. Why are you suffering? You, they need a compassion. They need a consolation. They need proper understanding for them to get out of it so that they can also realize what you are realizing. No Mahatma will answer, just say, hey, this is all Mitya, don't worry, no. They will be so compassionate, so come down to your wall and help you out, slowly recognize yourself, these problems have no validity in the long run. Okay? Now look back, your own self, all the problems you had five years ago, you thought at that time so important. Now looking back, what's the validity of those problems? All those don't mean anything. Oh, what am I going to do? My no, this, my that, all those problems at the same will be after five years looking back. So now withdraw yourself. So sorry, even this will go away. Even this will pass away. So all this is only passing moments that we go through. And whatever is need to done for the mind to console itself has to be done. So if you need a psychiatric problem, you go to a psychiatrist so that they have the professional people who are trained to do at that level and that need that one. Don't compromise that. Those no Vedanta doesn't say enough of this. It's, it's absolutely practical. But also understand all this is relative drama that has to be played. So if now if you look back, the answer is, 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 is Vedanta is self, it serves everything provided you understand clearly. But don't teach Vedanta until the person is ready for it. Okay? That's why the Krishna also tells who is uh, eligible to have this knowledge also. So for them, they need a consolation at that level and that is required so that their mind is evolved enough to understand this truth. Then it's before I answer that question, I should also say, this is not absolute answers. These are answers to the best that I can understand. If it helps you, that's good. If it doesn't help you, that's his grace. <laughs> you have to keep mind because there is no specific answers for anything other than it, it has to ring in your own mind. So one person went to Ramana Maharshi. I might have told the story. I went to Ramana Maharshi says, Bhagavan, I came here, I have been asking this question, so many Mahatmas, no one could answer me properly and I know I can get an answer and he was about to ask the question. Bhagavan stopped right there. You won't be happy with my answer, it's better for you to go and ask another Mahatma. See, so you didn't even hear the question. Because then Ramana Maharshi said, this man loves his question so much, he is not going to give up the question. <laughs> That's why he went to so many people and he might have got answers, but he is not ready to give up his question. So therefore he is asking and he is not going to get answer also because he is not ready to leave that question itself. So you have to be ready to listen and apply, think about it. Don't accept it or reject it also. So you have to assume and then Take the answer and then see if that can answer you. Because this is just a background. It seems to me that discussing Vedanta with students has a risk of leading to confusion. How to manage that risk? Yes. So in order to avoid the risk, before you discuss, have some knowledge. 
so so that you don't get confused and others don't get and even if others try to confuse you you will not get confused so that's why vedanta question and answers are given after listening some texts normally you have to have tattva bodha atma bodha some classes are done with that understanding once you have some clear pictures and little bit of confusion then you can discuss and in the discussional it clarifies some of that because you hear other points of view which you might not have thought about that's the purpose of discussion so discussion is not from ignorant point nothing will happen <laughs> so ignorance discussion is after srotavya only mantavya after listening to the scriptures teaching at least first thing is to learn bhagavad gita and then the rest of the prakarana grantha bhagavad gita is yoga shastram and brahma vidya also it is a yoga shastram it requires helps you to mind to yoke your mind to that higher understanding also that's what yoga shastra so it is karma yoga bhakti yoga all are the yogas for jnana yoga siddhartham for gaining that knowledge you need a prepared the mind if you are not prepared and ask the question everybody is in the same confusion so the discussion has to be done with some basic understanding therefore there always a, a guide in the discussions where the discussion is led and he has to at least guide through to clear out the confusion so that's how we manage the disc okay question if i am not a doer then karma still belongs to me what happens to karma so if i am not a doer how can karma belongs to me end of the question karma belongs only when there is a notion that i am a doer when i have never done it then how can karma belong to me so the question itself if i am not a doer the rest of it doesn't follow then karma still belongs to me how it won't it belongs to only the one who has done it okay now what is gyanam gyanam is akarmai karma yah pasyad karma akarma yah pasyad right the one who sees i am a not a doer well doing it that's not easy now you are differing a different statement say that in the karmani in the action is going wrong at the same time i have to stand apart and recognize that i am not really doing it and for that only knowledge is required how can that so that's what prakutcheva chakarmani kriyamana in sarvasa ya pasyati tadatmanam akartaram sapasyati prakuti itself does this hey don't disturb me why i have to breathe sir breathing goes on whether you do anything or not what i am doing i am breathing why are you being unnecessarily <laughs> because breathing is a involuntary action that which is goes on whether you are awake or asleep heart is pumping you don't have to do anything thank god otherwise it will be a mess heart is pumping the digestive system is functioning all you have to do is putting things with the all sorts of things in the in the stomach god has to work day and night when you are sleeping he has to work what prana apana vyana udana so all the physiological proper all things are going on proper juices proper enzymes everything is ordered already automatically beautiful system every cell is getting its food distribution vyana Hey, don't I have to I have to give supply to this 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 cell that cell if I had to do it it will be going to be a real problem. Isn't it? But remember, every cell in the body is getting its nourishment. By what? That's a wonder of all wonders, and that's exactly what Vedanta is trying to point out. Simple muscle system, day in and day out, it is working like a heart, years and years. When a mechanical pump in the car fails after five years, rusting and all that, what a wonder! How far I have to go to see the beauty of the Lord? That is essentially. So if if I recognize that everything, I am able to lift my hand, not because of me, because there is a life is pulsating in me. I am able to fold my hand. I can even blink my eyes. That's because of the presence of the Lord. If I understand that. 
all i had to do is sit back and see his flow his beauty come out then only the dharmic dharma comes out all otherwise i am interfering that called jiva srishti is coming in i like this i don't like this all likes and dislikes and raga dveshas are coming because not from the ishwara srishti ishwara srishti is there but it i am superimposing my own value system on top of it that's where the mess is so here you know simple example i give is a fellows in the olden days they used to have a big trunks they didn't have suitcases they have big trunk and the fellow leisure brought a big uh, trunk full of things and saw the train and he want to go by train and he saw everybody is carrying big trunks and he felt pity for the train so he sat in the train and put the head on top of his head so that he is helping the train to carry that luggage so why don't you put it down No, no. I want to help the train because that is carrying me. Action are done by the prakriti itself. Appropriate because it's a interaction and action reactions is by the prakriti stand apart as a sachchi. We'll see a lot more about sachchi from standing apart and sachchi. Then the beauty will be seen. Then therefore you are not karta. there only a gnani who realize that i am he is the one who is sees himself he is not a doer well doing is going on and that is what a gnani is therefore actions do not belong to him so who belongs to him prakruti what's the prakruti body mind intellect is also prakruti it belongs to the body it belongs to the mind don't say i it's my that's your problem that's a notion that this body mind intellect is me is a problem body mind intellect will go through its problem but i am not i am atyati hi i am beyond that i am transcending this identification with the local body and mind but i am every body and mind only in this body i am enjoying in that body i am suffering In fact, I can say that body is suffering, and this body says, "I am only enlivening every body." That should be understanding. If time permits, why is it said that jnani never dies, and so why not agyani never dies? Yes, nobody dies because nobody is born. Only that which is jata sahi dhruva mrityu dhruva janma mrtasya cha that which is born alone will die. so what is born is particular body that dies because the body has to go through his it's it's a natural state but i am not the body when i understood then for i'll never die that's why arjuna was crying i says you are crying where there is no reason for you to cry and whole essence of vedanta came in the first few lines first two shlokas itself जनाधि i am eternal person that should be understanding so therefore gnani never dies agnani doesn't die also what dies is only matter that coming out from the bmi it is that is born and that's the bmi that is going from transfer from one not the body but the mind the subtle body goes from one state to other state to different lokas it is the mind and intellect that is traveling as when there is a mind means is a flow flow in was a direction and direction is set by the vasanas that is what is karma okay so that's why according to the karma you will be going to different lokas that's what we did so agnani also doesn't die gnani also doesn't die but gnani knows that he doesn't die agnani thinks he dies the difference between the two is agnani thinks he is dying and therefore he is crying whereas gnani na doesn't cry but he says body is having problem it has to go through so so ramakrishna paramsa the throat cancer throat has a cancer but he doesn't have a cancer ramana maharshi the operated will will awake in the, in the in the leg leg hand has a problem but he never had a problem so that is the clear understanding what these are new one or these are answered one 
Oh, those are answered ones. What are dreams? What are dreams? I think you should know. Everybody should dream. <laughs> dream comes or any creation comes. That is true because dream analogy is nature has provided the experience of dream and deep sleep state. Waking state, dream state and a deep sleep state. Nature has provided those states to see the absolute truth because you are neither a waker nor a dreamer nor a deep sleep sleeper. But you are in the waking state, you are in the dream state and you are in the deep sleep state. States keep changing but you don't change. I am playing a role of a waker in the waking state, dreamer in the dream state and deep sleeper in the deep sleep state but I am neither a waker nor a dreamer, nor a deep sleeper. Who am I? Sarvantaraha. Right? Just now we said. Yadatma. That Brahman is Aparotsha Brahma. He is Akshat Aparotsha Brahma. That I am. You have to claim. It is a claiming what you are already. And therefore, what are dreams? Dreams are due to vasanas. What are the vasanas? The suppressions and oppressions of your waking state provides the dream vasanas for you to exhaust. And therefore, whenever the intellect has come down its level, pure intellectual state is not there. At that time, you can dream. So the dream is projected. So nidra shakti, just as maya shakti, has a two powers. One is covering. Avarana Shakti and another is Vichyapa Shakti, projecting. Here the Nidra Shakti covers that you are awake, you are sleeping in a pure Dunlap below the bed in an air conditioned room, all that is covered. That is called Avarana. That means your true nature is covered and once it is covered, it projects your something else in the dream depending upon the vasanas. What are the vasanas? These oppressions and depressions of your waking state are seeds of vasanas that projects your, your dream world and where the creation is beautiful. This mind supported by the consciousness is creating the dream world, where is the, what is the dream world? The whole characharam, the whole beautiful, movable, immovable world, forest, everything you are creating there. And after the creation, your upavishad, you, you enter into the dream world as a jiva in the world, as though you are a subject in the dream. And forgetting that it's your own creation, Thinking that you are only a local jiva, looking at the forests and all that and you see a big tiger coming at you and then you want to save yourself from the tiger. Tiger you created, forest you created and whether the tiger is going to go eat later or not, you also have to tell that. <laughs> so Swami Tinchedaman used to tell that I dreamt I am in the exam. And then I could not answer the questions and I failed in, the, in my dream. So I could not fail, I could not even, may, I, I did the question paper also. I said the question paper, I am the examiner, I am also taking exam and I dreamt all that and I also failed in the exam. <laughs> so at least I could pass in the exam in my dream, if not regular. I create the tiger. I create the time forest and I made the tiger hungry also and I create myself as a subject for it to chase and then I am running away from the tiger. What should I do? What do I do? Wake up. So once I wake up, do I ask for where is the tiger? Let me gun, have a gun to shoot the tiger. You say, oh, that's all dream. It's not real. So, the reality or unreality of the dream is recognized only when I am awakened to the higher state of consciousness, that is waking state. But what about the waking world? Do I have to get up in order to see? No, here itself I can develop the viveka. Viveka means discriminating what is nitya, anitya, vastu vivekam. What is real and what is not real, I can develop that viveka by sadhana. Once I know the discrimination, I can veil, veil in the dream world, that is in the waking state, I can know what is the reality, veil still here, which is not possible in the dream. Why? Because that we, to develop the viveka, if I develop, I won't be dreaming. For dreaming, the viveka has to be slowed down. 
so that is where the but nature has provided a beautiful example in fact that is the only example parallel example where you yourself be a creator Ishwara of the dream and then forget that you it's your own creation and then suffer the consequence of that forgetting that you are the creator what a, what a, what a wonder sometimes dreams come true good so the best thing is dream good things <laughs> it comes true because of the vasanas that you have so if you have that's going to happen you feel it and you may get that's a lot maybe blessing in a way sometimes the departed souls come in to your dream and inform you something good or bad thing is going to happen just understand the law of karma karma is where whatever you have done you have to bear the consequence of your actions that's a law of karma whatever i have done i have to bear the consequence means if i have the notion of a doership kartrutva bhavam whatever i do i have to bear the consequence of that action and even the lord cannot stop it lord himself suffered the karma right every if you look at rama story also why his wife left and all that that was a big story behind all that and the vishnu he has to he killed somebody and he the rishi gave him said that you will be de, you will be devoid of your wife's company so this is all part of the karma that was done so everything is every action has to have a reaction so whatever i deserve i get not whatever i need or whatever i desire whatever i deserve i get so what should i do my attitude is understanding that this is because of my past actions accept it as a prasada buddhi prasada means whatever comes to you because he is karma phala dhata he is the one who gives the results of the action so accepting of whatever the consequences and reacting to the degree that because you have purushartha there where whatever need to be done in the situation and gurudev used to tell beautifully is what i have is prarabdha and what i do with what i have is purushartha so everything i am getting so future prarabdha is nothing but past prarabdha modified by my present action so whatever that comes accept it is even the gyani does this here by path the body mind intellect will be suffering or enjoying whatever but he will accept as the prasadam of the lord or in you know, my own prasadam also either way you can say so yes so anybody in, involving the the great souls coming in is also part of your vasanas also because that is dictated by your own mind as coming yes i i imagine my my great father and all are coming into my dream and telling that also in that form oh no advaitins and dvaitins explain interpret these upanishads do advaitins and dvaitins explain interpret these upanishads differently oh we are advaitins by the way so we are talking of you mean vishishta advaitins so i'll read as this is because the advaitin is what we are studying here the vishishta advaitins dvaitins explain interpret these upanishads differently yes they do interpret the vedanta differently i have to be like yagnya valkya <laughs> if truth is one how they interpret differently how oh, that you should ask them i think that if the truth is one and if they are different because they will think that that is the correct interpretation i know if you studied the uh, bhagavad gita as it is have you heard of the title <laughs> but uh, for them everybody else is interpretation and theirs is as it is that is their interpretation of bhagavad gita only and it's all done in a different way also so that's why ishwaranugrahate va pumsam advaita vasana there is a there is a statement remember i brought i was brought up in a vishishta advaita family my father has written commentaries on vishishta advaita in fact we are trying to publish them is a 
the the book that uh, we are trying to publish now is uh, Vedanta Deshika Sahasya Sar. Vedanta Deshika is one of the great the the lion of Vedanta, and he has written many many books. In fact, he formulated the Advaita in a form gown, providing a lot of dravya. What are the definitions and all that? And Vedanta Deshika has has written Satadushani. Satadushani is hundred abuses against Advaita. Satadushan. And my father has written commentary on the Rahasya Trayasara. There is a, uh, that was originally written in Tamil by Vedanta Desika. He studied Tamil and wrote commentaries on that in Telugu. And there are 14 volumes of that we are trying to publish. Actually, Chinna Chinna Narayana Jira took it to publish it, but uh, he didn't do it, so we have to publish it now. So that's, uh, I don't know why I told, because it's sister Advaita. So even though one has brought up in a particular frame of mind, but I got exposed to an Advaitic Swami. So it's all the, the Puro Janma Samskara only dictates you. That's why the statement in Avadhuta Gita, Ishwara Anugrat Eva Pumsam Advaita Vasana, Advaita the tendency to appreciate Advaita, in fact, Advaita is more scientific than other ones, uh, from my point. And that comes because of your own past karmas, punyas only. So that's why. So if they different interpretly, they do different and they have philosophical explanations of the Vedanta also. And I fortunately, I did study the, uh, the Vyakhyan, the Brahma Sutras of the Sri Bhashya. They called Sri Bhashya by Ramanuja. There is one uh, Swami uh, SMS Chari. If you go to Google and ask SMS Chari, you will, he has written a lot of books on Vedanta, on the Asishta Advaita. He stayed with me also. So he taught me Sri, Sri Bhashyam. The, and Sri Bhashyam, he criticizes Advaita. In fact, they have Mahalagu, Mahalagu Puropatsha, Lagu Puropatsha, Mahapuropatsha and all that. So very interesting arguments you hear. But listening, re reading those will help you to f abide in the correct knowledge. Yes, am I correct or not? So one should study others only after establishing firmly in your knowledge. Otherwise, you get confused. Yes, truth is only one absolute. Sadaji, could you explain the word nir nir nirvidya? No, nirvidya we studied here in the, in the Upanishads. He says, Nirvidya is here, Nischayena Vidya is Nirvidya. That means understanding clearly what is being taught through the Vedanta. Okay? It's not absence of knowledge. It is, <laughs> it is Nischayam. Nischayam means that which is clearly explained that knowledge without any doubts about it. So, one has to listen. If the teacher itself is confused, then everybody will get confused, right? Communication. So, teacher has to be himself studied the Vedanta properly from his teacher, clearly, so that he can teach. So, when, when Gurudev only told me, you understand it, therefore you teach. That's, a, that's, that's his statement, you know. That was a, the last camp. It's a, so, it's, a, it's, it's Nishchaya Vidya. It's Nishchaya. How an uneducated person who is a saint, Kabir, who knew Sarva Bhuta, Sarva Bhutantara, right? So, how any, yes, he, that means he had the education required. So, here the uh, uneducated, we are talking about uneducated in terms of worldly voice or uneducated in terms of Vedanta voice. So, if he has last year, last Janma itself, he has been exposed to the Vedantic teaching, then he doesn't need any more. Says so Krishna gives in the in the sixth chapter, uh, one who is ubhaya brashta, one who has understood and not realized yet what happens to him. That was a question by Arjuna. He says nothing will be wasted. He will be born in a conducive environment for him to go rapidly. He already has knowledge, but he has to go through the vasanas that are lingering vasanas get eliminated. There is also Jalabharata story in the Upanishad also. So therefore, the understanding, even the, in the uh, Nisargadatta Maharaj is the only Pan Bidiwala 
and at the same time he is, he had the faith with the teacher statement that tattva must you are that not this that's enough for him it took 3 years for him to realize how do you know he realized look at his answer the way he answer if you read i am that book it's a completely meditative and we have to not quote it you have to see what he is saying then you see that's the beauty of that also what's the need for strict karma kanda if knowledge is the means so karma kanda is the jnana yoga yogyata siddhyartham so until i could claim the hearts i need an effort right ashwarudha example is given so i need a karma yoga to purify the mind so that it is ready to listen to the scriptures so karma yoga is a beautiful and most efficient way to remove the vasanas now how do i know my mind is purified enough or not if you can sit through the vedantic class and able to concentrate without the mind distracting somewhere that means you have sufficient purity of the mind to listen to the scriptures you don't care how you got it whether karma yoga upasana yoga or because of your purva janma punyam if you are able to sit in the minute in the vedanta class and concentrate on the teaching that means your mind is purified you are qualified enough because you are able to observe that's meant for karma yoga is only meant for if a, if a rajasic mind if you sit there he will get restless and he will try to go whenever an opportunity comes so he can't sit quietly that's why manushyanam sahasreshu kasthit yatati siddhai so thousands of people only few people are interested even advertise you all over advertise not, nobody will come only people who are really interested will come or oh, we don't have enough audience that means people are not interested in this teaching that's all it means they will come interested in next life don't worry about it those who are interested this is all this is knowledge is meant for them only don't nothing to worry about it so remember i gave the in the chandogya upanishad brahma ji also big advertisement for uh, vedantic knowledge and all the advertisements in three lokas only two people showed up <laughs> so only two registrants and one fellow dropped out after first class so <laughs> only indra indra left <laughs> but <laughs> yes so that that is part of the if you go to chandogya we took that is there so if if karma kanda is required to make me my mind prepared for jnana kanda jnana yogya yogyata siddhartham karma yoga so once prepared then karma kanda has done its purpose but as long as i am in the world then it's not karma kanda anymore i cannot but help i cannot but do so it's not i am involved in some karma kanda but i can since i am involving karma i do all the time anything other than for the loka kalyanam only for the benefit of the world i cannot but do now because i see the beauty everywhere the lord everywhere what should i do so here is the one right? we have to very very clear understanding also see the flower blooms itself beautifully i don't have to do anything flower doesn't have to do nature itself makes it and the very beauty of opening the flowers it beautifies itself and everybody is enjoying it but as a human being for me to bloom myself i have to evolve because i am given an intellect to evolve and therefore i had to do with the intellect creative work that beautifies me and around everybody that's what the whole cinema mission here is why should we build this sort of if i am interested in vedanta why i should i get involved in this i could have sat down and say okay but the center is meant for so that there are other children has to evolve in this process and therefore my action is part of the glory to the lord to beautify so that the nature itself around me is beautified and in the process the whole generations because lokam is nothing but him but he has given a choice for us to beautify he himself beautifies all over the world is beautiful my granddaughter was showing tata garu miss the grandfather look at how beautiful the sky is who created it or who painted oh lord how did he get paint of this road color oh don't ask me he has all the colors <laughs> this is a girl of six but for us 
we have to make an effort intelligence is given a creative ability is given to us to beautify the surroundings that we have how add to the beauty of the lord by beautifying itself that has to be done so therefore it becomes no more karma yoga it is natural process of seeing the beauty of the lord everywhere as a part of because remember the body mind intellect belongs to him only it is in his service only so in one thing in in the vishishta advaita and advaita i don't know they they do what they call samasrayanam they put a, a seal of the symbol hot hot burn uh, sanku chakra here i didn't go through because i was afraid of when i was child but my father used to do it and it means that you are putting a symbol of vishnu which means that this body belongs to vishnu therefore it has to the service of the vishnu only that's what meant what is vishnu vyapakatvat vishnu vishvam vishnu vashatkarah so first thing in the in the is only vishnu that is vishvam is vishnu the whole world is nothing but vishnu so for the sake of vishnu i have to do means for the sake of loka kalyanam only i have to do oh i got i answered this already second time it seems to me that discussing vedanta with students has a risk of leading maybe i must have put it back so that completes the question and answers thank you and we have oh 143 we'll take 5 minutes break it sets yourself and